Okay, cool. So we are here at Atlanta Fest 2012 with Jamie Grace. <laughs> and uh, so is this like your, this your first year at Atlanta Fest, right? Um, my first year playing Atlanta Fest. Um, I'm literally like a rock star from my dad's church um, here in Stone Mountain. And I've come to this festival since high school or middle school probably. So it's it sounds cheesy, but it's like a dream come true to actually be on the stage of Atlanta Fest. It's first year playing, but I've been coming here for forever. Cool. So that you said your dad's church. Does that mean you're a PK? Yeah, I am. Uh, they started at Kingdom City Church. They, meaning my mom and dad, when I was about two years old, uh, started as missions pastors, and it's grown into become an amazing uh, community and just a family there. And so my dad's pastor, mom's pastor, sister's worship leader. I play drums when I'm at home. My brother-in-law works with the youth. We're very close. <laughs> Awesome. So you play drums and guitar. I do, yeah. I started learning an instrument a year about seven years ago. Um, I started with drums. And so um, it's a drums, guitar, keys, um, a bass, ukulele, banjo, and uh, uh, violin. Yes, violin is. Wow. Sure. I'm awful at violin. I will be so honest with that. I'm, just, I'm like the worst violin player ever. Like, I can play one introduction to a group on group song right. and then I just sit down and start crying. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. So you literally could do a whole album like by yourself. <laughs> I don't know if it would sound as good as the guys that <laughs> actually record it. You know, drums and guitar and keys might, might sound pretty okay in the ukulele. But um, but yeah, I, I like playing all those instruments. I do a lot of this stuff on YouTube, playing a lot of instruments. And my sister and I just, we just love learning. So we just play a lot of instruments. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So like, when how did you come to faith aside from your parents in the church? Yeah. Well, um, I grew up, and I always say, you know, kids see their parents walk, and they learn how to walk. Kids see their parents talk, and they learn how to talk. Um, obviously, I can walk and talk, but I uh, saw my parents serving, and I learned how to serve. And so I've always known that it was a part of who I am to, to serve others, um, to think of to think of God, and then think of God's people, and then think about myself. Um, and I've always just known that I was supposed to, in some kind of way, just be a part of, of people's lives, you know, and hopefully inspire and hopefully and so um, I became a Christian when I was seven, um, but when I was 14 years old is when I really um, just kind of like really gave my life over to the Lord um, in, a, in a different way and really decided that I wanted to um, just serve in a different capacity and really be able to reach out to His people and I uh, wanted to do music full time and just wanted to, I mean singing was just kind of something that I happened to know how to do, but when I was 14 is when I realized that I wanted to share God's word with other people. In, in a way that I can hopefully encourage and inspire. I happen to be singing and writing songs, and I was like, well, I, I guess I'll make music then. <laughs> so you write all your own songs? I do. I do write quite a bit of them. Um, there's a couple songs on the album. There's one called Show Jesus and the one called Holding On that were brought to me that um, I had nothing to do with, but they were just so good. It's not like, you know, you can't pass on a good song. Right. And so I was like, I have to sing these. And then there's songs like Not Alone and Ready to Fly that I wrote completely by myself. Um, but then there's also songs like, you know, Hold Me and With You and, right. and, uh, and uh, 1945 that I was pretty close to being done with. And then the, the, the producer, Chris Stevens, and Toby Mack helped me finish them and tie them up. So they're, they're very talented people. I'm glad they helped me out with them. <laughs> cool. So how did you link up with Toby Mack? Yeah, um, well, he found my music on YouTube, actually, um, in 2010. I started about the same age of 14 when I realized that I really just wanted to reach out and share God's word with other people through music. I started putting YouTube videos up, and so I did that for, well, I still do that now, actually. I sing other people's songs, do covers of my favorites, and, you know, I'll do a country version of one of my favorite pop songs, or do a medley of all my favorite rock songs, and that kind of thing. And so I was doing that, and then in 2010, um, Toby found my YouTube videos, and um, reached out to my mom and I, who's my manager, and wanted to meet with us. And just probably two, three months later, I was signed to his label and recording my first album. And so it's been a very fast, very fast thing that happened. But uh, at the same time, it has been a long journey of really wanting to do this. And so it's a blessing. Praise God. Wow. So then I don't want to take up too much of your time because I do want you to play. So I want to <laughs> okay. ask you one, ask you one um, important question. Yeah, Who fine. is Jesus? You know, um, he's my best friend. And I remember I... I, uh, I, I, uh, at the, at the, at the, at the Devil Wars this year, which is kind of like, like the Christian equivalent, um, to, you know, the Grammys, and so I was super excited to go. Um, I remember when I, I, I got the, like, New Artist of the Year award thing, which was not, I was not expecting, it was overwhelming, and it was amazing, and I remember when I got up there, I was so nervous, and I, every time I'm nervous, I revert back to, um, just whatever is on my heart, and I just start rambling about things that I love. I do that all the time. If I'm talking to a guy that I like, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, you want to go to Chick-fil-A? What? I'm sorry. And when I get nervous, I just start talking about things that I love. 
And I remember saying, Jesus is my favorite. And some people were asking me about that later. They were like, well, what do you, you know, that's such kind of a weird way to talk about Jesus. But, I mean, he really is. Like, uh, the, the first time that I, that I heard that the God of all gods and the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords sent his son Jesus to die for all of my sins so that I could have eternal life. The first time I heard that, I just remember, I was like seven years old, and I remember being so like, overwhelmed with emotion and just wanted to tell every single person I knew about Jesus and that he could be their best friend and that they could go to heaven and spend eternal life with him. And so um, even now, you know, just thinking about it gives me chills. Like Jesus, like the Jesus, you know, he died on a cross for me. He died on a cross for you, for all of us. And so thinking about that, he's, he's, the, he's the best. I mean, I can't put it any, I can't. My mom gets on me about my southern accent. I can't put it any other way, you know. I always ask me, people ask, ask me all the time, they're like, you know, how do you do the music thing? How did you do the school thing? I played, I think, 35, 40 shows in my last semester of university. And it was tough, but I always say the only way that we can get through this life is if every single morning when we wake up, we just we look to the Lord and we say, you lead and I'll follow us. I got ways that are tossing me, crashing all over my beliefs. And in all sincerity, Lord, I want to be yours. So pull me out of this mess I'm in, cause I know I'm on a bed. Leave my soul back home again, I've always been yours. And this world may push me forward, but love and never fails. You need Your grip, your grace, you know the way you call me tenderly. 